currently the events communications coordinator at uh, the DBIA in Brockville. Um, and joining me is Lori. She is from RT09. And if you just want to introduce yourself quickly. Thanks, Sam. Yes, I'm Lori McIsaac. I'm the Director of Operations with RT09. Um, RT09 is the regional tourism organization. We are Region 9. Uh, so we have um, quite a few slides in today's presentation because um, who wants to look at my face for an hour? Let's get some great it's a cute face, though. <laughs> um, but you know what? It's all about. Um, it's all it's all about experiential tourism and uh, how we get through COVID and all that uh, sort of stuff. So I thought I'd um, give us something else to look at as we go through this. Um, and and by all means, please stop me at any point to ask uh, questions if anybody has any. Um, if anybody watches this as a recording after my email address will be at the end, I'm more than happy to, uh, to answer questions and my, I believe I have my mobile on here as well. I'm always happy to help um, if anyone has questions. So in a nutshell, we are one of 13 regional tourism organizations in Ontario funded by the Ministry of Heritage, Sport, Tourism and Culture Industries. It's always a mouthful. I don't know how they come up with that. Uh, we're here to help tourism businesses actively promote and grow the development of tourism products and initiate, um, that, excuse me, and initiatives across the region. Uh, the Southeastern Ontario region includes everything in yellow that you see there, and that's probably a fairly, um, it's a little blurry, I think, but uh, it really goes to the Quebec border. So Cornwall and SDG County flows right through to include Brockville, the Thousand Islands, Gananoque, and the Rideau Canal, Kingston, Lennox, and Addington, Frontenac counties, Prince Edward County, and Bay of Quinte. Um, so our, our mandate really is to, as it says here, to provide strategic regional tourism leadership and, and um, I have to look at this screen, it's bigger, in coordination, uh, and to help build and support competitive and sustainable tourism products and experiences. So um, the chain of tourism responsibility really starts at the top with Destination Canada. So they advertise, they market the Canada as a whole, and then it filters down to Destination Ontario, then to the RTOs, and then more locally to your DMO and DMP. Um, we support partners in a variety of ways through funding in programs like our partnership program, which I'll be talking about today. Um, through experiential tourism workshops and coaching through social media workshops and webinars. Webinars more importantly right now, of course. Um, and right now working with uh, our agency of record to build a tourism recovery program for the region. Um, we're obviously targeting staycationers. We're not getting many people from across the border, obviously. Uh, we are getting some from Quebec. Um, an occasional person drops in from, from other provinces, but really it's, uh, it's who we have in our own backyard. So our industry website, tourismtalk.ca, for um, anyone who is in the tourism business, business or attracts tourism, and really that to me is just about any business that's alive today. So you're going to have people coming through. This is a website that you really need to be visiting, um, you know, occasionally if, if, you're, if you're hardcore tourism, if you're a cruise company, if you are uh, a DMO, DMP, if you're a company who really uh, most of the people who walk through your door or consume your service or product our tourists coming from other areas, you should be visiting our website. So some of the valuable information you'll find include insights into traveler and business concerns. Now we're actually um, right now looking at up, uh, updating this to include um, what's going on right now through COVID. Um, it, the, the quickest and easiest way to find out that relevant information as of last Friday is of course to review our PowerPoint presentation, which was our 2020 Tourism Summit, which has uh, direct information in presentation form from our agency of record 2031, from uh, BD Tartan, who is also partnered with, uh, with 2031 and Alphabet. So all three of those businesses um, will present uh, information on Destination Ontario. In addition to that, of course, we have presentations from both Destination Ontario and Destination Canada um, that has terrific information. So um, you can find uh, that presentation a little later this week. We're just editing it and uh, compressing it a little bit and it will be on our website and on our social media channels. Um, so what you can find on our website 
is um, uh, key visitor activities and experiences. It provides a breakdown of global trends that affect local tourism. Not so much global right now, of course, and as I said, we're updating that, but um, you know, it's, we're not always going to be living in COVID. It's gonna be a little different when we do come out, of course. Um, but for right now, we're, uh, as I said, we're updating that to, to be a little bit more directly related to what we're going through now. Market Profiles offers a sneak peek at what travelers from our strongest tour tourism countries up until COVID, which was uh, US, China, UK, and France are looking for. Um, I'm not sure that that will change as we come out of COVID, as we slowly come out of COVID, uh, they will probably still be the leading tourism base for us. but. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll have to see. No one's got um, a crystal ball to see what the future holds. You can also sign up for the, mo the monthly newsletter. Really, really important if you are a tourism business. One of the challenges for, um, for businesses really is how do I, social media is probably the best attended webinars that we have. And it's because a lot of people are so busy trying to run their business or running their business that they don't have time. They just don't have time or they don't have the skill set. or um, to a degree like myself, I really just don't understand the workings of social media. I understand what it does. I understand the importance. I understand what we have to do from, from our end, but that's why we have um, a digital marketing specialist in Lindsay Medeiros. She does all that wonderful stuff and she also hosts um, uh, workshops and webinars that pe people can attend free, which is great if you're a business owner. Um, okay, so, and then we have southeasternontario.ca, uh, which is our consumer site. Um, and our consumer site is obviously where consumers go uh, to find out what's going on in our, in our area. And I'm still, I'm still quite amazed that people don't know more about this site. Certainly we uh, you know, we're pushing it out that every turn on social media, we certainly hope that our DMOs and DMPs, destination management organizations and destination marketing programs throughout Southeastern Ontario um, are spreading the word about this. But uh, it's where consumers can find everything out about um, uh, what's going on in the area that they're coming to, whether that's Southeastern Ontario as a whole for a day trip or whether that is uh, the Brockville area. So they can find things like listicles, uh, upcoming events, um, and for those that are watching this, and if you are planning any sort of event, if it's virtual or not, um, would suggest that you include us in your social media posting with the hashtag Southeastern Ontario, because then we can pick it up on our end and push it out to all of our followers. And we've got tens of thousands of followers um, so we're always looking for new things to share. Um, we've got, I think we all know that Southeastern Ontario has some of the best tourism assets in the, provi in the province. Um, we've just got, and Brockville for sure. I mean, I, I, I'm, uh, I tried to get into the tunnel when it was closed. So I'm headed again, I'm headed, I'm, I'm determined to do that. Um, but our, but you know, the goal right now, as you well know, is to look for those staycationers to, and to show them the things that they may not know exist. So rediscover, um, escape the cabin fever, get outside, which is really big um, this, uh, this past spring and more importantly, the summer it took a while for, for everyone to kind of realize, okay, I don't have to stay in. I just have to be careful when I when I go out. So we've got some of the, the best and most beautiful assets in Ontario, I think. And I would argue that to the other 12 RTOs. Um, but it's not the traditional tourism assets necessarily that people are looking for. So uh, the face of tourism has been changing for quite a few years now, especially since March of this year with COVID. One thing remains constant. It's about the experience. No longer are people looking to, you know, just go to a museum and look what is behind um, glass. Not, not to say that that's not important. It's very important, but I'm sure anyone who's visited a museum in the past few years see that um, it's a different ball game. Like it's a lot more experiential. Um, there are virtual tours, certainly right now with COVID. Um, but what constitutes an experience for everyone has broadened significantly. So the Kingston, this for instance, the Kingston Kick and Push Festival, this was from last year. Uh, this year's lineup was really interesting and it wasn't of course in person, but uh, they draw thousands of people each year to the downtown core to experience one of a kind theatrical presentations in unusual places like 
vacant storefronts. It's really cool. It's a small audience, um, but really successful. Uh, and it entices some pretty, pretty big names in theater. It also draws people from uh, across Canada regularly, certainly from uh, beyond Canada when they went virtual this year. Uh, they had live performances. Um, but some of the live, uh, quite a few of the live per performances took a backseat to online experiences. And uh, if you're not f familiar with them, I would encourage you to check out their website. Um, it's Kingston Theatre Alliance uh, or kickandpush.com. Um, festival and events are always big attractions for tourists. Not so much right now. Um, they're looking a little different. There are still festivals. There are still events going on um, with social distancing and everything else that has to happen. But um, you know, this is uh, this is temporary. It's going to be a longer temporary than uh, most of us would like. It's going to take us longer to get out of this, but we will get out of it, and um, we'll be uh, richer in knowledge, um, and we'll and hopefully richer in experiences of all types as we come through. So, just to clarify for everyone, a tourist is deemed someone who travels more than. 40 kilometers to an area. And this is important when we talk about the application for partnership funds a little bit later in this presentation. Um, so just taking this again, visitors want to gain firsthand knowledge. And, uh, you know, the picture of the canoe is from last year. They are still running that program with half as many people in the boat. So a lot of these uh, events are still happening. They've been delayed a little bit. Uh, pushed a little further into the year and, um, you know, certainly some interesting um, um, adaptations are happening, but they're happening. Um, now more than ever, people want to get outside and back to nature is high, high, high on their list. Um, so COVID's thrown a huge wrench into the tourism industry, as we're all painfully aware. Um, from remote working to feelings of um, isolation and boredom, people are tired of being cooped up, myself included. <laughs> any chance, even though I've been working from my cottage for the last uh, six months, um, really any chance to get out and, and get in my car and drive around or uh, even come to my uh, home office within Kingston is, uh, um, you know, something that's different for me. But, um, you know, while we can't travel abroad right now or even across the border, uh, for the most part, we can look to staycation. And I can't tell you how many, how many um, tourism operators I've either heard from or I've reached out to or I've just driven by and seen, you know, whether it's um, the kayak place on Highway 38 that said out of stock due to COVID, more coming soon, to Frontenac Outfitters uh, who presented at our summit last Friday, um, talking about, um, you know, how he was, uh, really quite afraid of, of where his business is going to go in March, only to find out a couple of months later that people were really suffering from being indoors. And one thing they knew they could do was to jump into a kayak or a canoe or stand up paddleboard and be out in mother nature on the river. So his business did a 360 degree flip, um, but then he had trouble getting uh, product in. So all that to say, he's doing quite well right now. I know that's not the case with everyone, um, but there are some really uh, terrific stories uh, of people who are uh, pivoting, Pam, to use your word earlier, adapting um, and actually growing with COVID. And one of our speakers uh, uh, used that term and I thought, what a great term to use because you can either stick your head in the ground and say, my business is done, or you can, you can try, you can talk to people, you can put your thinking cap on, you can reach out to organizations like uh, Pam, like yours and Sam, you can reach out to RT09, you can reach out to your neighbor, your friends, and just get that conversation going. So, um, you know, I come from a small business background and I know the challenges of trying to, you know, have more month and money. And particularly when we hit something like this, how important it is to push beyond um, what needs, uh, you know, what the, what the day brings. So experiential tourism, um, I mentioned that a little earlier. It is, um, it's just as important now. Uh, it's just a little different. Um, people wear masks now. They've got to stand six feet apart. Um, you can see in this, this middle slide, uh, and this is actually from one of our presenters from Friday. Uh, it's a small town. And um, when people get scared, uh, things happen. 
Um, and they, you know, we, we kind of sometimes will cower in and we, we just, we put up barriers and some of those barriers come out in not so nice ways. So, um, you know, the goal again is to push through and be as open-minded as possible to the changes that are, um, are needed and necessary. So um, this is where RTO9 and our partnership fund comes in. Um, the partnership fund is, it's been an initiative around for several years. It's designed with the intent to make the RTO9 region, so that, that yellow strip on the map that I showed earlier, a premier travel destination in Ontario by creating and enhancing tourism offerings within the region that generate new and repeat visitation, extending the reach, breadth, and depth of partnerships between RTO9 and our industry partners, and utilizing partner synergies to drive tourism across the, industry, across the region, rather, um, extending the length of stay and tourism receipts. Again, we're in different times, but that is still very much true. So uh, I'm not going to go through all of this. Uh, there is an eligibility that you must meet as an industry partner or a DMO. Um, uh, the most important on this slide would be that you have to be legally incorporated. So if you are not incorporated, um, then if you have a partner that you're working with and they are, then they can apply on your behalf as, as your partner. Um, the rest of this uh, is really included in the Partnership Fund Guidelines, which is on our website. Um, and I am, again, I, I can't stress this enough. Please, if you plan on applying, reach out to me first. Let's talk about what you're going to do because language is really important when you are completing an application for funding. Um, so this program is, is usually over, oversubscribed each year. Um, approved partners usually have about 30 days from project approval to submit the required documentation. Um, this is kind of the standard uh, understanding that now we're in COVID. Um, well, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the changes to this application for a second funding window that we um, have opened up because uh, as you can imagine, many of our projects had to cancel because of COVID or postpone until next year. Um, so I'm gonna flip right by that one because I realized I put 50% in there and one of the big changes we made to the second round is the, uh, the partnership ratio of funding, which is now changed to 70-30, uh, 70% that we're happy to say we are going to contribute 30% that the partner, the partner will uh, contribute. So um, one of the things I do want to call out, this is probably one of the most, uh, uh, one of the largest challenges we have once people get approved for funding and they start um, uh, sending in invoices. So what's important in funding is that invoices can't be made out to you and you can't pay them first if you are a tourism operator or a DMO. So let's say that you are um, you are hosting, I'm going to use events because it's easier, you're hosting an event and you're renting um, event tents for outside and you've got, you were approved for $10,000 of funding um, and the, uh, the tents um, cost $3,000, you can't pay that and then submit it because we can't cut a check back to an, an organization. Um, and there, there are ways to, to work around that, which I'm not going to get into now, uh, because once uh, someone receives funding, I actually do a webinar with everyone uh, to talk more in depth about that. But in a nutshell, invoices need to be made out to RTO9 directly, and then we pay them on their behalf. So, um, there is uh, a mid-year and or final report that I send out to those who receive funding. Um, what I would say to you without getting into much detail is a lot of it is cut and paste from your application and it's, it really is for the eyes of the ministry as much as for RTO9. Um, and they're looking to make sure that what you have planned, your milestones have been achieved. If not, why not? Um, and to ensure that, of course, they're getting their, um, you know, they're getting their recognition in the form of the ministry logo showing up on uh, any marketing materials, whether virtual or, uh, you know, on radio or TV or uh, in print that happens. So, um, again, a little bit different with uh, this new application uh, because it is more social media driven, which I'll get into in a moment, which actually this is it here. 
So I actually threw this in this morning because I just completed the application last night. So you are the first one seeing this. Um, and this is kind of a, a, a little condensed version of what the application is. Not an awful lot. I just left, left a couple of things out, the, out at the end. So what we have found um, in moving forward is, one, that most things are virtual, of course, for the next little while. Um, and that where we can offer the best assistance is to help market. Um, and in doing that, so we will be looking at things like paying for uh, uh, Facebook boosting ads uh, or Instagram or, you know, website or however you choose to do that virtually. Um, so we're not looking so much as product development. So I mentioned the tent thing earlier in a normal round of partnership funds, those those tangible um, things are are not really in place anymore. So um funds are strictly for social media marketing uh this year um, and as you see in this one we have two applications pam uh, and sam i guess for both of you so this one is actually directed at tourism operators so the tourism operator application itinerary marketing partnership funds so um, as it states there due to the can cancellation of some projects uh this year we have opened a second application window because we're not giving the government back their money we're going to spend every penny of it. Uh, this application is specific in nature and is designed to assist in promoting itinerary, I'll explain that in a moment, projects that include more than one tourism operator through a social media marketing campaign. Um, as such, these funds will not be available, as I said, for product or event development. So what does that mean? Um, as you continue down the application, um, there are limitations, of course. The project must take place in our current fiscal year, which uh, is any time up until March 31st, 2021. Um, one operator must assume the lead and complete this application. I'll explain, expand on that in a moment. Uh, and your marketing campaign must be a collective effort between at least two operators. You can have more, you can have three, four, five, six, seven, whatever works for you, um, but it must be at least two. Um, collectively, you and your partner or partners are able to contribute, uh, must be able to contribute 30% to the overall budget with RTO9 contributing the remaining 70%. I'll give you some examples of what that might look like shortly. Um, so fundable, fundable items are restricted for this particular application to marketing efforts through social media channels, as I said, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, your websites, um, with things like wages and consulting fees are not uh, eligible. What I would say to you is when in doubt, pick up the phone, send me an email and, and we'll figure it out because I'd rather you know what we can help you pay for uh, beforehand before you go and spend that money and you're not stuck. Um, our goal is not to make it difficult, um, and that's why I'm here. So it's just so much easier if you just pick up the phone and say, hey, Lori, this is what I'm thinking of. What do you think? And I'll either say yes uh, or no, or let's see if we can massage it a little bit to make it fundable and do this. Okay. Um, so it is for developed multifaceted itineraries to encourage additional travel to the southeastern Ontario area. There must be trackable performance measures and that's really easy on social media because you know how many people visit your sites, you know how many tickets you're, you're going to sell, how many, all that sort of thing. So it's, it's actually probably the easiest um, than trying to, you know, have somebody standing at a gate and pressing one of those things that tell you, like Costco, tell you how many people came through. Um, so uh, the regular, most of the regular 2021 partnership fund guidelines are applicable, um, of course, if it's all just it's, it's sort of geared towards social media this time. So again, you're encouraged to reach out to me with any questions. There's no bad questions. There's no silly questions. Um, and that's my job. My job is here to help everyone. So um, the asterisk here for, um, for itinerary is it has to be at least, at least two partners, as I mentioned. And an example of that would be if um, you had a cruise partner um, or, or a boating tour company or a fishing tour company, something like that. And it might be just an individual who runs a boat and, and um, offers, offers um, you know, charters of small groups. But they, so he put together a package with um, a, 
a, a food tour afterwards or with uh, some sort of interesting restaurant you've got in the brothel area afterwards. So that could be one. One of those partners would be the lead partner and would be the person who is um, uh, applying and my contact, right? They would handle the 30% money submitting that on behalf of both partners. A second would be a fall cycling tour, which is, um, you know, really, uh, um, um, popular right now right across the region followed by a B&B uh, in or stay and we've got one one of the one of our partners who spoke at our summit last Friday talked about um, connecting with a friend of hers who who owns a cycling company uh, out of the I think it was Frontenac area uh, yes, it was. And um, so he's running a, um, a cycling tour that will end up, they'll take the ferry over to Wolf Island and they will end up staying at her B&B. So it's really cool how um, COVID has kind of um, pushed people in the direction of building these partnerships, which is really what we've been trying to promote for the past couple of years, because it just works so much better when you've got somebody else going through it with you. And it's better for tourists because they're not just driving two or three hours to do one thing. Right, you've given them some somewhat of a loose itinerary where they they still have time to do their own thing. So, um, and then the third one there is a self-guided winery tour package with a hotel stay. So, on the bottom of that slide, you see that there is a maximum of two applications per operator. So, what that means is you can apply as the lead for two different. Um, um, uh, projects that you're looking at doing. So for instance, Brockville could work with somebody from Cornwall for one project. So someone from Brockville, um, Pam, whether that's you or that's whether uh, it's a tourism operator, and they can also work with somebody within Brockville or somebody within Gananoque. Do you understand what I'm saying? So your basically your name as a lead operator or the name of the person who is a partner can only be receive, receiving funding from two streams through RT09. So I think that's pretty reasonable at this stage in the game. Um, and how are we doing for time? Good. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, uh, in addition on the application, you'll see this, which is the project description and objectives. Um, we're looking for you to provide a full description of the project. Um, and it's okay to put it in bullet point because I read bullet points a lot better. <laughs> but if there, if there is a little bit, um, you know, if there's a little bit further explanation, please include that because uh, the less I have to pick up the phone and reach out to you to say, what do you mean by this? That, um, the easier. But uh, if needed, I do. I will reach out to um, many partners in the pre-approval process so I have complete clarification of what the project is. Um, as well as if, if and when partners are approved, um, then we are in contact with each other quite regularly so uh, we know how things are working. So we're looking for what is your project's unique selling proposition. So um, why basically, why would people jump in a car and come in and, and visit? Why would they come and do the cycling tour? What is special about it? What, you know, how are you uh, putting that all together? Describe the scope of the initiative um, and how your project benefits tourism in Southeastern Ontario. And, you know, right now, um, yes, we're looking for, um, uh, we're not just looking for bigger projects. So I wanna back that up just a little bit. We're looking for the small guy who is maybe looking to bring in every weekend he's going to run something or um, because it, when it's event driven even though obviously we're, we're still going to fund events it's a little bit more of a challenge and sometimes events can both be virtual and in person so uh, what i would say is don't be afraid to be creative don't be afraid to throw things out there and try new things um it's it's a new time for all of us it's a new dawn and and uh putting on your creative thinking hat and coming up with uh ways to attract people online or in person is really the name of the game right now uh, okay, and then assessment and performance measures. Again, uh, this is really what, for the most part, it's what you're going to take from your social media analytics. Um, if it's in person, you'll know. If, it's, if you're selling tickets to something, you'll know how many. Um, the goal is to find out, you know, one of the, one of the, the metrics is how far people are coming from. Um, sometimes you'll know that. Most times, I think these days, we know we have a good idea of where people are coming from. But we're looking for you to detail um, your performance measures in a smart format. So specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely. Um, and uh, if there are, is uh, any confusion about, you know, kind of how to list that, 
give me a call and we'll walk through it. And then we've got the marketing campaign details. So this is really the meat and bones of, of what, how we're going to be funding, um, what we're going to be funding rather. So we want you to list all your social media platforms that you're utilizing. So um, in this instance, the example is a Facebook boost. You're going to be um, uh, boosting your event, your virtual event or live event between November 1st and November 30th. And then if you've got additional, there are extra boxes, obviously, but um, if you have additional uh, avenues that you plan on doing that, um, if you want to list here uh, partner websites, so uh, if it's a tourism operator, I would assume it's going to be on your websites, Sam and, uh, and Pamela, as well as uh, we'll encourage you, I'll talk a little bit more about this, about um, RTO9 Southeastern Ontario um, website and our social media pages. Okay, um, so your, your operator contributions, the, we want you to outline your partner information and mutual partnership benefits. So it's pretty easy to me. I, I even contemplated taking this out because really you wouldn't be working somebody with someone if there wasn't a benefit to each of you. Um, but really what we're looking for here is just a, a, again, just an idea of, okay, we're going to be planning my job as the kayak tour operator is I'm going to plan the, um, the tour. I'm going to uh, put it all together, list the itinerary on my site. I'm going to take care of uh, the social media end of things. And my partner, the B&B that we're working with, is going to take care of listing it on their website. They're going to, going to put together other um, items, other things that people can do when they're at the B&B, aside from just sleeping. Um, so we really just want a better idea of, of what it's going to look like to a consumer. And then, of course, we're looking for a letter um, from your partner or partners as you see fit. And that's really just something that, that commits them to being a part of that itinerary package. Um, and uh, and um, let us know that they're working with you uh, in this. And then we've got other financial contributions. A lot of times there won't be anything there, but I know there are additional funding avenues right now, whether it's through um, you know your local uh, local uh, economics uh, development or tourism office or uh, anything like that. But if you have an opportunity um, to uh, to gain funds from anywhere else, we just want to know where they are. Okay, and then we've got the project budget uh, and financing. Sorry, I thought uh, that was down. So, um, so this is uh, this is the the meat and potatoes. This is the money of everything. So, what we're looking for here is um, how much you're asking for. So if your project, and what I would say to anybody who is applying is it has to be realistic. I did have someone last year, although last year was different. Of course, we weren't going through COVID, but um, they were asking for more money than um, the, uh, the TREAM model. If anyone is familiar with TREAM, T-R-E-I-M, I'm not quite sure how that will work through COVID or even if it would work. But basically what you do is you go on the, the website and you plug in all the figures about, um, you know, when your event is happening, uh, where, what the aspects are, and, and it spits out a lovely number of, of um, the economic impact to your area. Um, so, uh, you know, last year I had somebody ask for uh, 30 seven thousand dollars for an event that um he listed as generating twenty five thousand dollars so didn't really make much sense um that didn't mean that we won't fund we will just look that that triggered um a telephone call for me to say let's go over what this is and um i talked earlier about uh, offering to go over anyone's application prior to them sending it in i talk about that in a little bit here um it's Super important. Uh, not many funding agencies will throw that offer out there because they just throw it out and say, you fill it out and I'm going to review it. Um, we want people to be successful. We want to give you money. In order to do that, applications has to be, have to be done in a specific way. And sometimes it really just comes down to language where they've used the term local too many times when what they mean is local through Ontario, but they use local and we assume, well, it's not tourism. You just want us to help you boost your business within, you know, the boundaries of your city. 
Um, whereas if he, if this individual had spoken with me before, I would have investigated and talked about it a little bit more and we would say, oh, so it's not local you want, it's tourist, which is the word. So, um, we review them, but they actually, all applications have to, have to go externally to a reviewing panel. And if they don't understand exactly what they're looking at, it's, it's a no-go. And I hate to see that happen to somebody just because they didn't, uh, they didn't um, give me a call. So in this example of a budget, uh, like the last one, Facebook ad boost, they're looking at um, a cost of around $2,500. So the RTO9 contribution would be 70% of that. And on the right, the amount requested from RTO9, that 70% amount would be $1,750. So this extra little bit, let me get here. So this extra, oh, I just did something I didn't mean to do. The extra little bit here, the project partner partners pay the remaining $750 does not need to be on the application when someone's filling it out. Um, so if you, let's say you had three lines in here for different, um, uh, social media posts, then you just tally them all up at the bottom. Let's say you're looking for a total cost here uh, of $10,000 in social media. That's a lot in social media, particularly for smaller companies. Then you would be looking for $7,000 from RTO9. Okay, um, pretty simple. Uh, and that's about it. So um, what again, one of the things that I just want to uh, really reinforce here is um, to reach out. I'm here to answer questions. My cell phone number is, is on our website. Um, I'm happy to pick it up and, and walk through this with anybody. Um, but the next step I would think for anybody who is interested in applying for funding for this next round um, is to go on our website, tourismtalk.ca, and look under the partnership fund and look for the application. So when you open up um, partnership fund, you scroll down and you'll see this newest application. Um, it's pretty straightforward, but uh, we're really looking for uh, those that have um, a, a developed product that they're ready to take to market um, or can put it together pretty quickly because it, it is, it, it's going to be quite quick uh, from a time frame perspective between now and March 31st. Not many people really do much in December. January is a bit iffy. February maybe, but, um, but we're really game to entertain anything. Um, I am available until October 9th if anyone wants me to re review their application. I just can't do it that final week because that's when applications uh, come in and it is October 15th. So as of today, we've got pretty much a month for anyone to put their application together and have it submitted to me. Late applications, um, it's really tough to get them put through because uh, the next morning, as, as of the cutoff on uh, the 15th, the next morning, all the applications go out to the reviewers. So um, call me. That's what I would say. It's a great program. Um, you know, there's very little out there that would be too small for us to consider, even though on the application it does talk about a minimum of $750 uh, involvement, which means a $2,500 spend. Um, but I would just say, talk to me if there's uh, an issue. So if there's money out there. I just want everyone to know that we're only one avenue. Um, but a lot of people, one, don't know about RTO9 and what we do. Um, and two, don't know that there are funds available to help them do this. And, and you don't have to be a tourism um, company per se, because as I said before, a lot of businesses attract tourists, but it has to fall what you're, the program that you're looking to put together has to actually pull in tourists. Make sense? I think it makes perfect sense. That was oh. awesome. All right. I'm open for any questions if either of you have any. Um, honestly, I, I feel like you covered pretty much everything. Okay. Um, I don't know if you have anything, Pam. Just have, um, you know, and this is just a question. If there was something existing prior to COVID, an event or um, basically a itinerary that was already developed and want to get more um, partnerships involved, would um, the RTO consider um, something from that? Excellent question, Pam. Thank you. Um, yes. So it can be an, a, a program that has been ongoing. Um, and you're going to enhance it. So as in, as in um, our partnership fund up to now, uh, we had four categories. This one is, is pretty straightforward. It's, it's two categories. It's one for DMOs and it's one for 
uh, for operators. But before we had four categories, and one of them was um, uh, a new product or an enhanced product or event. So yes, absolutely. If you've got something going and you wanted to add another partner or you wanted to change it up a little differently, absolutely apply. Okay, perfect. Yeah, great question. Thank you. Thank you so much. And great detail, Laurie. Um, you know, and you know, being a little pervy to some of this information, being a board member, but you've done a really good job of um, getting this pulled together and explaining it for people to understand for sure. Terrific. I know it's a lot. Uh, it's a lot of information. I, I there are forty four slides there, so I do apologize. But it really, if if anyone is um, confused or challenged by I, like, I just don't know if, if my project is even worth filling out an application because applications, you know, I mean, they, they really should only take you a maximum of a couple of hours, if that, to be honest, and this one even less. Um, but if uh, really just pick up the phone, give me a call, we'll talk it over. And I mean, I'm even happy to go through the application with everyone as they're filling it out. That's, that's how much I want to give away money. And once we want to help people. Um, it's a great opportunity. We've got to we've got to really dial in to people who are the the you know the the day trippers, a couple of hours away, the people who are in the country who maybe want to come in the city for the day and do something different, or who just want to go away for the weekend. You know, I just yeah. want to. Rockville's got a lot going on. It's a mm -hmm. beautiful, beautiful little city. It's got a gorgeous downtown. And yeah, I think a lot of people just don't know about it. So, uh, you know, any opportunity to get people out is, uh, is a, a great reason. That's right. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, that, that was awesome. Okay. Very informative too. Terrific. All right. So my, um, the uh, partnership funding, you can see the link on the, on the slide there. So tourismtalk.ca and then you can, you can actually just navigate through uh, to reach me. It's Elma Kaisek at region nine tourism.ca. Um, and uh, it's probably the easiest way because I'm uh, driving around on any given day uh, doing things, but um, and sometimes uh, my, my uh, cell phone coverage is not the greatest, but i um, happy to talk okay. to anybody through any means possible. Okay, that's awesome. Great. Okay.